Right, right. Shalom, shalom. This is uh, Brother Osman Walk once again with another lesson. All right. First and foremost, before we get started into it, we're going to give all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rokah Kodash. And that's all praise to the Heavenly Father and His Son's name, who the world in the call Jesus Christ. Rule name of the Hebrews, Yahweh Shah. And also giving praise and glory to the Holy Spirit as well, which is the reason why these videos are being pushed out. And uh, I want to say Shalom to all the sincere hearted Akiyam. And Akwath, and I want to give uh, double honors uh, to my elders who taught me this truth. All right, so we're back once again with another prophecy update. Uh, I'm pretty sure you all have already heard about it by now. You know, if not feeling it, you know, we all feeling this heat right now, man. It's pretty hot outside. I'm standing outside right now as we speak. I'm at work, so hopefully we don't get a call to come in. But um, you know, nonetheless, I just want to, you know, to, uh, put something up here to, you know, feed the sheep. But um, as you can see on the screen right here, this was uh, posted June 18th. What's the day? Yeah, 20th. So two days, two days ago, right? And these conditions, they're even worsening, man. You know, each day, you know, that we go to bed and, and, and uh, rise up again, you know, things are getting worse and worse. And that's spoken about. As a matter of fact, let's just grab that real quick. That's spoken about right there in Ezekiel. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 7. All right, this is Ezekiel 7, verse, uh, we'll start at verse 5. He says, Thus saith the Lord, uh, Yahweh, an evil and only evil, behold, is come, and end is come, the end is come, it watches for thee, behold, it is come. See that? So, only evil and only evils should be expected, you know, uh, from henceforth. Now, we know, uh, according to the scriptures, you know, the uh, the remnant, the ones who've escaped. Um, you know, these evils that, that will be escaping the evils and the pestilences and the plagues to come to, uh, to strike the evildoers will be the only ones, Lord willing, that's going to uh, basically not be uh, partaking into that evil. Why is that? Because we've been fearing the Most High God, right, in the time of this so-called peace, right? This is uh, Ecclesiastes 8 and 5. He says, whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing, right? He says, and a wise man's heart. Meaning your mind discerneth both time and judgment, right? And even Sirach chapter 7 goes on to say that, um, let me grab that real quick. We're going to get into this lesson. Sirach 7, verse 1, he says, Do no evil, so shall no harm come unto thee. And a part of you doing no evil is you doing what? You're keeping the law, statutes, commandments to the best of your ability. And you have faith in the in who the world in the cause of Jesus Christ. All right, Yahweh shall mashiach. Hold on one second, we're going to wait until this truck passes. So yeah, man, so that's where we at, right? So we can expect uh, the, 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 the true believers, the sincere hearted believers, we have an expectation, right, from Yahweh Bashamal Shah. Why is that? Because we've been granted, you know, uh, this mercy, you know, to basically uh, come into this truth. And along with that, he actually he actually wants us to expect something from him, right? And that ex that expectation. Let's grab that. I didn't even plan to go here, but this is spirit bringing it out. It's Jeremiah twenty nine, right? Because you know we always talk about the pestilence, the plagues, and these evils, you know, all that to come. But at the same time, we got to remember that mercy and wrath coming from him, right? <laughs> we understand by now that this is. You know, with those who, you know, who's actually tapped into the spirit, who's tapped into this thing, you understand by now that it's Yahweh Bashmah Shah that's bringing these plagues, that's bringing this, this wrath. But at the same time, we also have to remember that it's mercy that comes from him as well, right? And so we also have to expect that mercy, right? Just how we should be expecting uh, wrath to come up on us if we do something evil. Well, vice versa, right? Because he is an equal and a power balance, uh, power, right? So even if when we, you know, do the best we can, we hope for the best. We hope for the best. And this is Jeremiah 29, verse uh, 11. He says, <clears throat> he says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you. And who's he speaking to? Israel, right? He's speaking to the Israelites, man. And more in specific, in, in specifications, he's speaking to the uh, elect, to the remnant. He says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith Yahweh, thoughts of peace and not of evil, right? Because we just read in Ezekiel 7 and 5, right? He says, an evil and only evil to come. 
Well, who is that evil prepared for? The wicked doers, those who's not keeping the law of such commandments, right? But those who is keeping the law of such commandments, like Ecclesiastes 8 and 5, who so keepeth the commandments shall feel no evil thing. This is who he's speaking to, right? So let's read that again. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith Yahweh, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. And what's that expected end? What is the end that we are expecting? Us getting caught up in those chariots, escaping the wrath from Yahweh by Shemuel and being placed into our into our land, having the law of such commandments in our in our inward parts, man. We are the first fruits uh, to to Yahweh, right? Redeemed from men, right? That is the expected end that we're expecting, right? But that can only you can only have that expectation when you're doing what keeping the commandments. Then shall no evil fall upon you. But let's keep reading. He says, verse twelve. Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Right, because when we was, you know, uh, out there in the world or in our past lives, man, the Most High, He wasn't taking heed to us. Proverbs twenty-eight and nine says that um, uh, He doesn't listen to the prayers of sinners. Right, we were off into the world sinning. Right, but now since the Lord has converted us, and this is why it's such a merciful position to be into uh, when you're inside this truth. Right, because now He's along with you being in this truth. Now you, <laughs> He's opened you up, right, to the point to where now He will accept and hear your prayers. Right. So he says, then you shall call upon me and you shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you and you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. See that when you shall search for me with all your heart. Right. And, you know, many of us can testify that we've actually, you know, uh, was the spirit that, that called us unto him. But using that search bar on YouTube, because YouTube that's a major platform that Yahweh Bashmah Shah has set up in these last days to basically allow his men and women to search for him. Where do you search for him? <laughs> in that search bar, right? And also you search with him in your mind and your spirit, right? So yeah, nonetheless, let's get back to this lesson. All right, it says, California Reservoir expected to fall. And see, this, man, I'm glad I brought up that scriptures, right? <laughs> because he says we have an expected end, but this is the expected end for the evildoers. It says California Reservoir expected to fall so low that a hydropower plant, right? And the hydropower, that just simply means that it's powered by water, right? That the hydropower plant was shut down for first time, right? So these, there's new, ever since, ever since the so-called white man, and I got to, you know, talk a certain type of way, you know, use discretion and wisdom because I'm, I am around here, you know, my job, you know, um, but ever since, so, you know, the Edomites came into power, you know, rape, rob, and murder, and pillage, you know, United States, they've rested at ease, man. This is why it's known as the virgin daughter of Babylon, because nobody's really touched this whore, man, right? But now she's being touched in ways she's never been touched before, man, right? Says that this thing is going to shut down for the first time. So the Lord is doing a new thing in the earth, man, as he said that he would. I believe that was, uh, what, Isaiah 55, if I'm not mistaken, right? And he says, um... So that the hydropower plant was shut down for first time, farmers say there will be no more water. See that? <laughs> and this is detrimental, right? He says, well, detrimental for them. He says, forced to leave fields uh, fallow, meaning dry, empty, right? Let's keep reading. He says, water in a key California reservoir. And what is California being known for, man? Their pride, gay pride. You know, a lot of wickedness. The Lord been plaguing California with them wildfires. You know, uh, uh, beasts have been actually changing their field, been changing their course, man. You know, a lot of uh, like wildlife uh, beasts, they've actually been coming out of the thickets and coming out of the woods and, you know, attacking uh, civilians, you know, just here recently. But the <laughs> even uh, when you read Wisdom of Solomon, um, I want to say chapter 17, you know, it's, and chapter 12, it talks about how newly created creatures, you know, and, 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 uh, and beasts, they will start to change their course and change their, their, uh, their roaming places, right? And the Lord is actually going to use uh, those beasts for vindication and for judgment. So the Lord, he's not limited to, you know, um, his methods of judgment, all right? So he has many different types of uh, methods of judgment that he would judge this great whore, and we're going to get that. Right, but it says water in a key California reservoir will fall so low this summer that its hydroelectric power plant will be forced to shut down for the first time. Officials said Thursday, straining the state's already taxed 
electric grid, all right? And you already know, you know, when an electric grid is, is overly taxed, man, <laughs> you're just begging for a blackout. You know, that's another thing that these devils are carefully organizing and constructing. All these worldwide, you know, especially nationwide blackouts, man. You know, you cut out the power, you know, from these civilians, there is going to be complete anarchy, right? But nonetheless, he says, an unrelenting drought and record heat, right? <laughs> and record heat, both worsened by the changing climate, have pushed the water supply at Northern Cali California's Lake Oroville to deplete rapidly. As a result of the alarming levels, officials will likely be forced to close the Edward Hy Hy Hyatt power plant for the first time since it opened in 1967, California Energy Commission spokesperson Lindsey Buckley told CNN, all right, you know, you can read the rest for yourself, all right, but we're going to get some scriptures, man, to basically solidify, you know, and, and strengthen our faith, right, because unlike these Babylonians, when they keep waking up morning after morning after morning, getting this evil, and bad news, right, and their hearts are troubled, man, but our hearts is more solidified, and and uh and built up and, and rooted in your how about your shah why is that why is that let's grab this real quick this is john 14 and 29 and this is the words of our lord yahweh shah the one who's bringing these evils this is what he says to his disciples which will be you all right if you're sincere he says and now i have told you before it come to pass what does that sound like you telling somebody something before it comes to pass what is that that is prophecy Revelation 19.10, that's the testimony of our Lord Yahweh Shah. It's the spirit of prophecy, right? It says, and now I've told you before it come to pass that when it is come to pass, you might believe, right? And what were some of the things that he said was going to come to pass? Evils, pestilences, plagues, heat, droughts, famines, right? So when it does come to pass, you might believe. So this is our job to set up in the spirit to show you these prophecies that he said that was going to come to pass. Why? So you might believe. All right. So let's grab a prophecy concerning this great whore's water. Be judged. All right. As a matter of fact, let's go back to Revelation. Let's go to Revelation 17 and 1. And he says, and there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows and talked with me, saying unto me, come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. All right, and this is talking about none other than, you guess it, Babylon the Great, also known as America, man. Right now, so he's going to show you the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. And we know, according to Bible prophecy, these waters represent what? Nations and peoples and, and multitudes and, and different tongues. Right? Uh, that's Revelation chapter 17, verse 15. All right? But also in a dual sense, Right, the Lord is actually judging this great whore by her physical waters as well, right? Because drought, uh, and famine, and uh, and, and um, and what do you call it, uh, lack of water that's actually a judgment, right? That he said that he, that was going to come upon this great whore. Let's grab that in Jeremiah chapter 50, because Jeremiah chapter 50 and 51 and parts of 49 is dedicated to uh this babylon that we're living in right now right and lord willing through the spirit sometime in the near future we'll actually uh just go over those whole that whole chapter you know on the sit down lesson on this channel because uh, that's that's important that's important um those are important scriptures to know in the days that we're living in all right why so you might believe all right let's go to jeremiah 50 and verse 38 nlt version And this is what he says. Uh, all right. And he says, a drought will strike her water supply, causing it to dry up. Come on, man. Hey, we're not making this up, man. <laughs> Call Allah Yahweh by Shema Shah. Right? This is why Yahweh Shah says, this is why I have told you before it come to pass. So when it come to pass, you might believe. Right? <laughs> hey. I, I don't know about y'all, man, but I get I get pumped up every time I read these scriptures, man. Right? Because I believe this thing, man. I believe this thing. Look, it's, it's right here playing out in real time. Let's go back to that article. Let's go back to that article. Let's see, where is it at? Where is it at? 
Oh. Yeah, here it is. <laughs> the California reservoir expected to fall so low that hydro plant was shut down. And what does the scripture say? A drought will strike her water supply, right? Because without this water, America wouldn't be able to survive. It wouldn't be able to thrive like it has, man, right? They trade up on their waters, right? They, uh, they use the waters for irrigation to grow their crops, you know, and <laughs> grow their GMO foods. But the Lord is striking all that, man. He stri he's striking it where it hurts. Because why? Our Lord is a man of war. And what's one of the, uh, the, uh, the tactical ways of a, of a, uh, of a warrior or, or, of a, uh, or army from an army? They strike the water supply. They strike the food resources. They strike the intelligent agencies. They hack the computer systems. You know, and there's also been, you know, plenty of information out there by now, you know, about these U.S. officials talking about how um, a lot of the inside intelligence agencies have been hacked from uh, basically electric electromagnetic uh, airwaves. And through the spear, we already know who's doing that. It's the, the holy chariots, man. Interrupting the, uh, the what do you call it, the, 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 um, the radio frequency waves in the air. So the Lord is attacking Babylon, man. Right, right now is is happening in subtle ways, but it's gonna build up and it's just boom. It's gonna be right there in front of your face. But nonetheless, let's keep reading. It says a drought will strike her water supply, causing it to dry up. And why? Because the whole land is filled with idols, and the people are madly in love with them. This is why. Well, one one of the reasons why, right? <laughs> because this land is filled with idols. Right? You got Caesar Berger, right? So-called white Jesus. You got uh, you got Islam, you got Buddhism, you got all these mixed peoples living amongst each other, just like the Tower of Babel in Genesis chapter 11. They're all bringing their own different type of gods, you know, just in, in essence to, to rebel against the true power of the heavens and the universe, man. So the Lord's going to show you who's God, man. He's going to show you who's God. And like he said in Judges, let's grab that real quick. He's going to hit you so hard to where <laughs> you're going to realize that the so-called gods that you've been worshiping and adoring and revering all these years, they won't be able to save you, man. All right, this is Judges 10 and 14. He says, yet you have forsaken me and served other gods. And who is he speaking to? The Israelites, the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans. All right, he says, yet you have forsaken me and served other gods. Wherefore, I will deliver you no more. Yeah, the, the Lord, he's not delivering the two-thirds in this time, man. He's only delivering the one-third and the 144,000, man. All right? He says, go and cry unto the gods which you have chosen. Yeah, our people, our, our moms, our fathers, our aunties, our uncles, our brothers, our sisters have chosen Christianity, man. All right? Chosen it through tradition. All right? He says, go and cry unto the gods which you have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. Yeah, because... Two major things are happening, just like in the time of Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 11, I mean 1 Kings chapter 18, right? You had the, the true prophet of Yahweh Bashem Shah, which was Elijah, and then you he was uh, faced against uh, the false prophets, right? Um, you know, uh, during the, uh, in the king of Israel, because the king of Israel at that time was uh, ah um, Ahaz, I believe, I mean uh, Ahab. I know he had the wife Jezebel, and they were basically, they set up you know, uh, all those false prophets, man. Right. And so Elijah went against all those false prophets. And basically the Lord answered who he was dealing with, man. And how did he answer? Through fire. Right. And this is how the Lord is speaking today, through fire. He's pleading with all flesh through fire, just like during that time, man. All right. As a matter of fact, let's grab that real quick. Let's grab <laughs> how the Lord is ready to just burn his place up. Right, this is why it's so damn hot outside. The Lord has given us a prelude to how it's really going to be. All right, and this heat that, that you're feeling right now is nothing in comparison to the heat of an intercontinental ballistic missile, man. All right, they've done the science, they've done the research. These these uh, these missile makers, right? These bomb makers, they say that that uh, those when those missiles strike is literally the same temperature, if not more, than the middle of the sun, man. <laughs> That's some heat, right? This is Luke 12 and 49 in NLT. This is Yahweh Shah speaking. He says, I have come to set the world on fire, and I wish it were already burning. And he said that back then, huh? 
around 2,000 years ago, a little over 2,000 years ago. Imagine how much more he feels now, man. Let's read that again. He says, I have come to set the world on fire, and I wish it were already burning. So, yeah, Yahweh Shah wishes this place is already burning, man. That's why Isaiah 66 says that he's pleading with all flesh with sword and fire, man. All right? <laughs> so get used to the heat. But once again, the elect of Yahweh Shah, we got that shade, man. We have, we have the shade. We have the covering. Yahweh Shah is our covering from the heat. As a matter of fact, let's grab that real quick. Then we're going to get back on this article. Or get some more scriptures on that article. <clears throat> Should be a tabernacle. Yep. This is Isaiah 4. Uh, we'll start at verse 5. Let's start at verse 4. He says, When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion. And that's what he's doing right now, man. He's washing away the filth of our sisters. You know, our sisters that's in this truth. Right? And I know a couple, you know, uh, that, that's really sincere about this thing, man. Right? <laughs> who's, who's asking questions. You know, who's watching the videos. You know, who's actually submitting to their husbands. You know, this is part of the Lord washing away the filth of the daughters of Zion. He says, and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment. All right, because this is how the Lord is purging us, man, by judgment. All right. And we'll rather be judged now. You know, take this, take this, um, this correction now so we don't be judged with the world. First Corinthians chapter 11. All right. He says, uh, the spirit. And by the spirit of burning and the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies, a cloud and smoke by day and the shining of a flaming fire by night for upon all the glory shall be a defense. See that all this, all this glory is going to be our defense. So we're going to be defense. We're going to have that defense away from all these harming mechanisms, right? That the Lord himself is going to be issuing out. Verse six, he says, and there shall be a tabernacle. For a shadow in the daytime from the heat. What is that talking about, man? <laughs> See, the Lord is our tabernacle. Like he said in Ezekiel chapter 11, he says, In all the places I have scattered you, I will be as a little sanctuary. He's at tabernacle uh, for a shadow in the daytime from the heat. Right? He says, And for a place of refuge and for a covert from storm and from rain. See that? So the Lord, and how did he destroy the world the first time? Through rain, through water, right? And Noah, he was he had that place of refuge. He had that covert from the storm in Yahweh Bashmal Shah. And we got that refuge from the heat and from Yahweh Bashmal Shah. So you got the first death and you got the second death. The first death was when the Lord uh slaughtered the world with the flood. The second death is gonna be with heat, with fire. But nonetheless, the remnant of Yahweh Bashmal Shah, we had that place of refuge. We got that covering, man. And this is why it's so important to abide in Hamashiach Yahweh Shah. John 15, verse 4. Abide in me and I abide in you. <laughs> it's that simple. All right. But let's keep going. Let's go to uh, Jeremiah 50 and 16. All right. Because this is also that heat out there in California is also affecting the, uh, the crops. All right. And this isn't just uh, limited to California because guess what? We get a lot of our crops, a lot of our produce, you know. Uh, from the Western uh, Hemisphere, you know, from uh, the United States, the West Coast. So this is what this is going to amp up and, and, and speed speed up the, the famine process, man. All right, with the Lord just simply striking the water supply and making it hot as hell outside, this is going to be affecting the lives of millions upon millions of people rampantly, man. All right, and this is all prophecy. It's just Jeremiah fifteen and sixteen in NLT. Right, because now the farmers are affected. He says, take from Babylon. Let me highlight it for you. It says, take from Babylon all those who plant crops. See that? And who are those? The farmers. The farmers are the ones who plant crops. And guess what? The Lord, Yahweh Shah is taking away the farmers right now. Because <laughs> if there's no water, the farmers, they can't uh, irrigate the crops. If they have no crops, they have no jobs. Thus, you have no farmers in Babylon. I have told you these things beforehand, so when you see them, you might believe. All right? Take from Babylon all those who plant crops, send all the harvesters away because of the sword of the enemy. And who's his enemy right here? <laughs> Yahweh Shah. All right? He's the enemy. He's the enemy against Babylon. 
because of his sword, all right, because of the sword of the enemy, everyone will run away and rush back to their own lands. And that's what you see, man. That's why you see uh, now all of a sudden a lot of, you know, these ethnicities, they want to start grouping and clumping themselves back up together again, you know. And through the spirit, that's what the elect is doing right now. We're gathering ourselves together. Oh, yay. Uh, uh, Zephaniah 2 and 1. Let's just grab that. Gather yourselves together. Oh, nation not desired. All right, because everybody's going back to their own land. Everybody's going back to their own people. All right? And this is the Lord once again confounding the Tower of Babel. Or confounding Babylon. Once again. Zephaniah 2 and 1. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together. O nation not desired. When? Before the decree bring forth. What decree? The decree to destroy this place. To destroy Babylon. Before that decree, this is when we're supposed to be gathered together. And how are we gathered together? By the word. Let's prove that real quick. This is all Bible prophecy, man. This is Baruch chapter 4. Verse, uh, we'll start at verse 36. And he says, as a matter of fact, man, this is, I forgot, man. This is all, <laughs> man, this is all heat, bro. This is all heat. But just for time's sake, because I am at work, we might catch a run. I'll just read verse 36. He says, O Jerusalem, Look about thee toward the east, and behold the joy that cometh unto thee from Yahweh. Lo, thy sons come, whom thou sentest away. Yeah, because Jerusalem, our motherland, Galatians 4 and 26, Jerusalem is the mother of us all, right? She sent us away in mourning and in weeping, like the book of the Baruch chapter 4 states in the previous verses. It says, they come gathered together, because when we read in Zephaniah 2, he says, gather yourselves together, O nation not, uh, not desire. But how are we supposed to be gathering together? How did the scriptures say and prophesy that we were going to gather, gather together? They come gathered together from the east to the west. Where are we at right now? In the west, man. How? By the word of the Holy One rejoicing in the glory of Yahweh. And this is right on time, man. This is how we're gathered together. This is why you're watching this video. This is why you're watching other brothers' videos, man. Because we're being gathered together by the word. A lot of us, we didn't know e each other, you know. <laughs> we didn't know each other before this truth. But how do we get to know each other? How do we gather together? None other by the word, man. This is prophecy. Why? Before the decree brings forth. Right? Before he brings that decree to destroy this place. Right? He wants to save his remnant. He will save his remnant. Let's read that again. Zephaniah 2 and 1. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff. See that? <laughs> when something's chaff, that means it's been burned, man. It's been withered. You know, when you consider wheat, you know, if it that chaff that's on it, it's chaff because uh, uh, it's, it got withered away from the heat. All right? It says, before the fierce anger of Yahweh come upon you, before the day of Yahweh's anger come upon you. Seek ye Yahweh, all ye meek of the earth, all right? Because uh, Matthew chapter five, verse five says that the, uh, that the earth is given unto the meek, all right? He says, which have wrought his judgment. Seek ye righteousness, seek meekness. It may be you shall be hid in the day of Yahweh's anger. This is how we're hidden, man. All right? We just got how we're being protected from the heat. He, he's given us that shade, that place of refuge in him, in Isaiah chapter 4, right? But this is how we hid, man. We're hidden by this word, being, by being gathered together by this word, right? So let's get this real quick. It's Jeremiah 51. Let me get in NLT. Verse 13. Right? Going back to the city, I mean this uh this this whore that sit up on many waters, the Lord is judging this place. He says, "You are uh, he's still speaking of Babylon." He says, um, "I start at verse twelve. He says, raise the battle flag against Babylon, and what's the battle flag against this place? What are we raising it uh against this place? The Bible, man, and brothers literally doing that, man. We out there at camp, we got the Bibles in the air, reading out of it, right? <laughs> this is the battle flag, man." Right, he says, reinforce the guard and station, the watchman, prepare an ambush for the Lord will fulfill all his plans against Babylon. 
you are a, a city by a great river. A great center of commerce. Is America not a great center of commerce? When you read Ezekiel 17, uh, it's giving you foreshadows, you know, of this place because it's known as the land of traffic. What is America? What is this place known for having at five o'clock? Traffic, man. Right? This is that land of traffic that's spoken about in Ezekiel 17. Right? And this is that great city of commerce that's spoken about right here. It says, you are a city by a great river. Yeah, and that river's being dried up, man. A drought is upon her waters. It says, uh, a great city, center of commerce, but your end has come. <laughs> he says, but your end has come. The thread of your life is cut. Right? And if you consider a, a thread inside of somebody's body, what is that called? An artery. An artery. Right? <laughs> if you cut somebody's artery, hey, they're going to bleed out. And America's bleeding the hell out right now, man. Bleeding out. You know? Now, on the, you're still alive in that process of you bleeding out. Right? But <clears throat> each, as each second passes by, you're, you're one step closer to death. And that's the state of America right now, man. That's the state of America. All right, let's get one last scripture. Malachi chapter 4. He says, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. Yeah. And we, and once again, the Lord's already giving you a prelude to it. He says, I wish the world was already burning on fire. All right. <laughs> Those are all preludes until this day. He says, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble that's that you're the chaff that chaff that's spoken about in the scriptures the wicked doers they're the chaff he says and the day that cometh shall burn them up say if you how a host that it shall leave them neither root nor branch see that so it looks like it will be a hot girl summer after all, <laughs> all right, it's gonna be hot as hell man you're gonna be hot and thirsty america is a hot thirsty hole right now man america's a hot thirsty, thirsty whore so, uh, so yeah, that's pretty much all I want to bring out. But let's uh, let make sure before I close it down. Yeah, another article I had saw yeah, is about <clears throat> the mega heat wave. Yeah, that's Malachi 4 and 1, man. That they burn it as an oven. All right. Y'all can read through it. You see it's, uh, this article I'm reading off of. It's called endtimeheadlines.org. You know, and they're pretty good about... Um, you know, updating you on uh, on things that the mainstream news, you know, won't uh, won't tell you about. You know, but uh, it's, it's your job. You know, especially if you're a man of the Lord. You know, uh, amongst the Israelite nation, you're supposed to be out there watching, man. Luke chapter twelve, Yahushua says, "Blessed is that servant, uh, who when I cometh, uh, I shall find him watching." So this is what we set up to do. The Lord has given us plenty of ways and avenues to to be watching. You know, so. Um, yeah, man, that's pretty much it. But yeah, until next time, I'm going to say my waffle, I'm a ball. Kwame Yashala, Shalawan.